learn more about the sport and uh, you know other people's ideas kind of get entangled into your mind and you know they, they kind of push what they think on you it kind of you know maybe corrupts a little bit the the purity of w what I was thinking of in 2004 and so then I think maybe you know four or five years down the road I started to maybe feel like I didn't get a gold medal versus you know having earned the silver medal but in that moment in 2004 I was very excited about it uh, a few days after getting my medal, my dad became sick and I think the hardest thing for me to realize in that moment was that he had a cancer that, you know, could come back and he had these health conditions and he had, uh, he was on dialysis and all these different things were happening. I think through my childhood he kind of always downplayed that role of, of what it was and what it took for him to be able to stay alive and that, that will to live. I don't think I understood it until the moment that I, I was in a hospital in Greece um, watching my dad fight for his life and the first hospital wasn't the best of conditions and so it was very scary to be in a, another country and, and no, not know exactly what was going on for there to be language barriers and to know that you know, my dad came here to see me and to celebrate this moment and what if this is the end of it all. Uh, so to really keep myself in the moment and get ready to prepare for the relay, but also, uh, you know, be there with my dad and be praying for my dad and know that God was going to come through for my dad. I was definitely fighting a battle of like, why did you bring me this far to, <laughs> to have my dad die in Greece? This is, this is going to be horrible. Uh, so at that moment, I had to really depend on the Lord to, to give me peace and give me serenity so that I could figure out what the next best step was. My dad did a really good job of putting me at ease despite, you know, the idea that he was in the hospital and that these things had happened and he was in an unfortunate situation. He said, don't worry, I'll be out, I'll be fine. Uh, you go out there, you run your heart out, everything's going to be great. So from that aspect, he did kind of the same thing to calm me that he did right before the 100 meter final to make sure that I, I wasn't going to be thinking about that as I stepped to the, the, the starting line. I think the moment that the relay was going bad, you, you don't know what to think. You're, you're 20 years old. <laughs> uh, the stadium is packed with people. They're all counting on you, and you're just you're, you're wanting to pick it up and just run. <laughs> you're like, this can't be over. Can't like, how did this happen? And so I think it's the longest two or three minutes of your life having to walk, you know, the the next 200 meters to get out of the stadium and. Uh, you know, it's the first time you're coming face to face with all these cameras and you're addressing people about what just happened and you can't internalize for yourself what just happened. And so in that moment, you, you have to depend heavily on God. There, there's no way to get through a moment like that without faith in the Lord because it's just like everything has just been taken away from me. I just embarrassed our whole country. This is all my fault. What am I going to do next? And without knowing that there is something deeper and greater that there, there that that's out there that's going to get you through and and that there will be a, a next a uh, better moment i don't think that i would have you know really been able to to you know hold my head up and smile and get through the everything and and even dealing with it going forward after that uh just a really hard experience i think one of the coolest thing of things about the olympic experience is the idea that you have all these people in your life that, you know, come up at the at kind of the weirdest times or, you know, just when just when they know that you need them. And one thing I do remember afterward was getting back to the village and seeing my friend Cyan Richards Ross. And the first thing she said to me, instead of saying, oh, man, what happened or anything like that, she said, um, come here, let me pray for you. <laughs> it was just that simple. Uh, and so you see God pop up at these little times and uh, just that little inkling from here and there. Everyone's dropping a little nugget for you to remind you that this is not the biggest thing. Though you feel very low right now, that you will get through this.